our terminology when talking about solids of revolution has maybe been a little sloppy. If we have just a curve and an axis, and we rotate the curve around the axis, Axis, we don't get a solid, we get a hollow shell. To get a solid, you take not merely the curve, but this entire region under the curve, and rotate that entire thing around the axis. We'll now ask the question, what if you have some region like this, and you rotate it around the axis? You'll get the kind of malformed inner tube or malformed donut. How do you find the volume of that figure? To answer that question, we'll introduce the so-called washer method. Although our way of introducing this method won't make it totally clear where this name comes from. Suppose you have a region in the plane defined like this. You have a curve up here, a curve down here, and you are on some interval. And you want to take this region between the curves and rotate it around this axis, whatever it is, and compute the volume of the resulting figure. We are going to do this using two integrals. So here's the region that we want to take and rotate around the axis. Don't know how to do that. So that's instead of taking just this region, take the entire region under this curve, which I'm going to call the outer curve. and rotate this entire region around the axis and find the volume of the resulting figure. Well, the volume is pi times the integral from A to B of this distance, the radius. If this is the x-axis, this radius would just be the outer curve. We won't assume that this is the x-axis. So, We take this radius, whatever it is, and we square it. 
And that's the volume we get from taking this entire region and rotating it around the axis. This, of course, is not the volume we're looking for. It's bigger than the volume we're looking for, but it includes the volume we're looking for in it. We wanted to take just this region and rotate it around the axis. And we did take this region and rotate it around the axis. It's just that we also took this region and rotate it, rotated it around the axis. And this region we wanted to rotate around the axis. This region we didn't. So we got some unwanted volume, and the unwanted volume comes from taking this region and rotating it around the axis. And we know exactly how much unwanted volume we got. This, remember, I'm covering it up with my finger, so let's copy it down again. This is one of the curves that defined the region we're looking at. And the unwanted volume came precisely from taking the area on the region under this curve and rotating it around the axis, the unwanted volume is pi times the integral from A to B of this distance squared, which we'll call the inner radius. And now put this information together. The volume, the real volume, the volume we want is this big volume that we calculated. The integral from A to B, the outer radius squared. And now we'll get rid of the volume that we don't want. via subtraction. Integrals, if we remember from last semester, have a property called linearity. If our limits of integration are the same and we're subtracting the integrals, we can combine it into a single integral. And here's our formula. Let's summarize. 
we have our axis, we have the region that we are rotating around the axis. We'll start at the axis and we'll draw a straight line until we hit the region. And that distance is going to be the inner radius. We keep drawing the line until we reach the far side of the region. And this entire distance is going to be the outer radius. And the volume is the integral from A to B with a pi in front of the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. And I've drawn this for a horizontal axis of rotation. But if we have a vertical axis of rotation, it doesn't change anything. You still draw a line from the axis axis to the region. And when you hit the region, that distance is your inner radius. You keep going until you leave the region. And that gives you your outer radius. The volume is still an integral. The only thing that changes if you've got a vertical axis is that everything is in terms of y now. Our limits of integration tell you what y runs between. Our expressions have to be in terms of y. We're integrating with respect to y. Before we end this video, let's very briefly ask ourselves, washer method. What's with that name? Why washer? Well, another way of deriving the form to the I just gave you would be as a limit of Riemann sums. You try to approximate the volume on a bunch of sub intervals, and then you add those approximations together. And in particular, if you're looking at some specific sub interval, you do the approximation using a rectangle rectangle, as we have done many times before. And if you take a rectangle that's oriented like this, and you rotate it around the axis 360 degrees, you wind up
with something. That looks like this. In particular, you wind up with something in the shape of a washer. So that's where the name comes from.